So we're starting sprint two uh, for shared delusions. This sprint is going to span three weeks, starting on uh, today, going through uh, June 23rd. Um, at a high level, what we're focused on for this sprint is uh, phase two of the data model cleanup, um, the uniform dev environment um, logging, as well as We're also going to start Tosca work. And then the idea is for unit testing is to get Sonar Cube set up so we can start getting um, coverage posted there. And from the QA perspective, as stability testing, enhance the framework, um, and then build the framework development. So from a planning perspective, I think you guys have taken a look at this. Um, I think we've slipped out on a couple of things, and I think we need to see if we're going to be okay because of some of the dependencies. And so I think, Mateo, you mentioned that there's still some work pending for XOS configuration, yep. um, which could potentially put Tosca engine rewrite at risk, and we have a hard dependency to uh, get the recipes rewritten before we limit needs XOS UI container. So just some cascading risk as we look at this. Yeah, there is also some design decision that needs to be uh, made that are uh, related both to the Tosca engine and the right uh, uh, that will affect the um, auto discovery of models. And we'll have a meeting tomorrow, 11.30 to 12.30. So, uh, um, I will see how that meeting goes. I'll keep you up to date, or if you want to join the meeting, you are, of course, welcome. Okay. I think I have a contact with you. Um, and then the other thing that we wanted to know was, I think some of the open cloud work is a bit behind. So the CDN work is for that. And so one of the things, uh, one of the other dependencies we're monitoring is uh, the CDN work is dependent on open cloud work finishing up. So that's the other item as we head into sprint two that uh, may be at risk. And then Zach, you mentioned uh, potentially not being around for sprint two. So uh, we'll need to see where Sonar Cube work is at. So with that in mind, um, at a high level, this is kind of what we're looking at for sprint two. We can start getting into Jira um, and the stories there. Any questions or comments? in terms of the plan. And then I think the only thing I want to note from a dependency standpoint on Fabric is uh, our understanding is that Fabric integration is going to start in Sprint 3. So uh, um, Charles Zarab let us know if that isn't happening in Sprint 3. I think we're going to have to shuffle some folks to make that happen. So. How is Fabric integration defined? Fabric integration is defined as uh, we're updating some of the configurations in Core to work with some of the changes to uh, the Fabric and its APIs. When the sprint start? Uh, the third sprint? Right. Uh, 626. Okay. So, I don't know, it seems okay because we, we do have a lot of work to do. Um, we're at the end of June, but uh, July should be possible. Um, we just can spend some time doing the integration. Okay. Um, I think the maybe a few other things to kind of also work through is I think we're trying to do a 3.01 build soon to catch some uh, defects. And then I think there are plans for E chord and A chord. Um, integration based upon some of the changes to sync up with 3.0. So I think those are some of the things that are coming in that we're kind of keeping an eye on. Um, and then the only other thing I want to note before we head into JIRA was, um, Luca, you're online, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so um, in the review last week, it was noted that uh, it's very critical for us to get the documentation up to date. 
I saw that you had sent out an email about documentation, but I just wanted to kind of note that um, there were review comments uh, that it was mm -hmm. critical for us to try to prioritize business sprint too. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we start right, Jira. Okay. So we'll start with uh, data model cleanup. And then um, I'll add another note that we added another sprint. So David, I saw that you're online. Uh, while we're going through the shared delusion sprint too, if you can um, add stories to your containers. Sprint oh, story. okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so we'll start with data model cleanup. So Scott Staffen. Um, is Sappen, yeah, Sappen is here. I'll let him go first then. Uh, and if, if everything was out, uh, Scott's picture is Sappen. Uh, we may just need to make sure that that works, especially Sappen, since you're going to be traveling in this sprint to Menlo, right? Right. So, so I've got a couple of stories are realistic. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I've got a couple of tasks left over from the previous sprint. Uh, so recreating the model devs API, which relies on the old Django based data models and uh, needs to be changed over to Exploto. The, the API generator needs some Garrett gymnastics to merge into master. And these should take a couple of days to get done with. Um, besides that, this sprint is a continuation of the process of auto-generating ad hoc code and uh, identifying and organizing anonymous code in the data model. So Django's unique constraints, the unique database constraints right now are hand-specified. We want to auto-generate those. Um, there are helper functions in the data model still in the attics that are not a part of the model class definitions. They have to be moved somewhere. Uh, we don't know where yet, but uh, moved together into a, a library somewhere. There's data validation. So when uh, models are saved, some validation happens on the server side. This is handcrafted generic code right now, and we hopefully we ought to generate it at the very least uh, formalized in an, in a form, in, as a formal interface. And the same goes for security policies. So um, there's a lot more of these than validation code, actually. And the plan is to characterize this to um, extend Exploto to encode it and to auto-generate it. And this is probably, this part is probably going to be the big chunk of this uh, sprint as it's also going to require some infrastructure on the Django side to implement generically. So right now our implementation is specific to particular models like slice and site and we want to generalize that. Uh, in terms of um, whether this is doable, one of the reasons a lot of points have shown up is, is as I've broken up my tasks into smaller pieces and I guess when you do that in Jira, it automatically inflates your point points count. Um, and I'm going to be in Menlo Park. I think I think I can get this done. So that's my response to the uh, question of whether this is doable. Okay, and and uh, I think just a note. I really like the granularity in terms of the stories and the points. So um, as we've noted, granular. Uh, stories are good. <laughs> <Or else>. um. <laughs> Granular story. Oh, yeah. I've seen the fabric one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so it sounds good, I think, if you've looked at it in the timing work. Um, I think the thing to note from sprint planning is there is some time to kind of for things to spill out into sprint three, other than, of course, the service tenancy model is uh, dependent on getting the data model cleaned up, so. Uh -huh. All right. So many details. Okay, Scott, do you want to go over yours? Sure, so um, 
1242 should really be listed ahead of 1243. Uh, 1242 is finishing up generalizing the model policy framework started on that uh, last sprint. So this is just finishing that task. Thank you. Um, 1243 is to move all of the model policies um, out of the services or out of the core and out of the service um, code that gets uh, implemented in the core out of the attics and get that code into uh, the new model policy framework. Um, so those two, I think, are going to be um, the bulk of this associated with moving out the model policies is also Cord 1393, which is there's a bunch of uh, tenant with container logic um, that is really part of the model policies and that's going to need to be moved out. Uh, the key is going to be doing that in such a way that it's it's not just uh, wasted effort when we move into the next sprint and, and redo the service and tenancy um, model. So I'll try to do that with, with the intent in mind that we're going to be changing those models around and implementing it in a compatible way. I think that's it. Okay, thanks, Scott. Mikhail? Uh, yes, uh, regarding the configuration management, uh, I plan this, this is just a move over uh, from the last uh, sprint. I didn't manage to finish the integration with uh, all the synchronizer, and I uh, I love to finish it. Uh, there are some subtasks that to uh, to that to make sure that they are correctly in the screen. Okay, so, so I, did, I didn't. Understand. The, the main task, but I have the subtask task to track the. Okay. So it looks like work. about a week's worth of work left. Uh, yeah, you have to make it happen by, let's say, Wednesday, Thursday, this week. This week. Okay. And then uniform development environment, Andy. So the main task here uh, for this sprint is to. Uh, move away from Gradle is driving the build process towards make. Uh, we're all in agreement that, that we want to do that. Um, so the first task is just bootstrapping the development environment, cleaning that up. So we have two different uh, build and development environments right now. We want to move that into a single one. Um, the next is to figure out, or the next two are to figure out for Onos and Mass that are both using Gradle pretty heavily to, to build various pieces. How do we, what's our strategy for um, building the same, you know, Mass automation containers, for example, without using any Gradle code? Um, and so, um, I was going to take on the task of building the Onos apps, although that's something that maybe I am not that familiar with. So if, if somebody else is available, or, or at least I'll, I'll pick, I'll, I'll go around and pick people's brains about um, what are the requirements here. Um, and David has has offered to, to step up and, and handle the, um, the mass part of um, getting rid of Gradle. Then I guess so. We'll we'll create a, a master make file um, in the the cord repository that is the thing that's going to drive the the overall build. And the first step I think is getting components in place to build the hardware pod. Um, that's I think where we want to start, and then in in. Subsequent sprints, we can we can build out the make targets to cover other things like the development environment, like cord in a box, like building um, XOS profiles. Um, th so the the final one, thirteen seven seven, is I will be in Menlo Park next week, and I want to sit down with other. Uh, people building XOS services, particularly like the E chord and the M chord, um, A chord people, um, to talk about what are our thoughts so far about 
how we're going to be refactoring the development environment and the build environment and get their feedback on whether that would uh, help the, the work that they're doing. So I will give a, a presentation about that and hopefully we can spend some time talking about it. Okay, thanks Andy. Hi. Uh, Andy, I I confused. Uh, I remember in your document you said we will uh, don't use the make anymore. You spread on some other tools, but uh, right now I see the make again. So is that I misunderstood or where use the make where we don't use it? So right. So um, in the service profile directory in Core 2.0, we did use make to uh, set up um, to configure XOS. And so that particular use of make was refactored away for, for Core 3.0. That's, that's kind of separate than what I'm talking about here, which is the process of building a pod right now is driven using these Gradle commands. Um, to fetch the images and build and publish the images and so on. Um, that is the piece that the developers um, have, in general, agreed Gradle is maybe the, the not, not the right tool for that job of driving the overall build. Um, so we are going to get rid of, of Gradle and, and use Make there. Okay, Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Okay, great. Okay, that's it. Okay, rewrite cost engine. Uh, yeah, I'll pick it up the, this task. We'll start the design discussion uh, tomorrow, and I hope to get it done by, uh, by today, uh, by this week, sorry. Uh, and next week I'll start implementing the new Toast engine in a separate container called into the core of the GRPC API. And I also created a task to migrate the existing Tosca um, recipe to the new uh, format. Uh, I recall there were there was an intern coming that could help us with it, so I've not assign this yet to anybody, I hope to get some help from Varun. Okay, thanks, Matteo. Logging. So I, I think I can uh, report for uh, uh, Shivani here. Uh, yeah, if you want to report. Um. That's we, um, Shivani started working on the new uh, logging system uh, last week, uh, last sprint, and uh, the plan for this, uh, this sprint is to start uh, unit testing it and integrating it with, uh, with XY. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to help her uh, here and there when needed. I see 20 starting points, which means we're looking at four weeks in a three week sprint. Uh, uh, the week's worth of work already? Yeah, actually, um, implement logging component one. I consider that last sprint uh, effort, so it's basically done. Okay. Yeah, if you prefer, we can plug it as done before you start the sprint. Yeah, that would be good. Maintenance, Andy? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Um, so, I guess one of the things that's missing here is um, cut the uh, 3.0.1 release. I'll, I'll add that after the um, after the call. Uh, the two things on here is one, a documentation update. So the quick start physical guide is a little bit stale where it talks about VTN and um, the fabric. So I was going to update the VTN section. 
Um, the other piece is that as I was looking over the the Quick Start physical uh, document uh, and and trying to think about how that needed to be updated for the fabric, I realized that there was a configuration piece um, for XOS missing in Cord 3.0 that that basically integrated XOS and the fabric. Um, so it's it's just one um, Tosca file that didn't get carried over for some reason from Cord 2.0. So I need to figure out how to restore that so that the fabric service running in XOS can automatically you know, configure the fabric when virtual machines or containers get get created on the compute nodes. Are you picking this back to 3.0.1? Yes, yes. So the, um, yeah, particularly 1379, I was going to wait to cut 3.0.1 until that piece is done. But I think that's the highest priority thing that I've got um, right now. So so that should be pretty soon. But that doesn't also update the fabric if there's a new compute node or new switch, or is that something that could be hooked into that as well? The, this is not the goal of this bug fix. This is just because that's something new that, that we have not um, had before now. This is just you know something that used to work on Core 2.0 that no longer works on Core 3.0. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Luca, it looks like you're planning to refactor the installation guide. Sorry, I, I couldn't hear you very well. Uh, Luca, you also have a story in this epic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, the first one is the generic refactoring of uh, the the physical pod installation guide. So it's not related to specific, you know, uh, paragraphs. It's really a general refactoring, meaning uh, reorganize the paragraphs and. Uh, and then all the the steps I went through till now, um, I found some issues or things missing, requirement missed. So uh, I plan for now, um, since it's not clear where it will go, the, the new guide, um, I plan to write it down on a Google Docs, share it with the others, as we've done for uh, the installation guide in Onos, and when we have a consensus, we can copy it over to somewhere else. And it's also putting different images, diagrams, uh, wiring diagrams, uh, and so on. Things that people usually uh, ask during deployments. Okay. Yeah, I just make sure that we keep all the diagrams consistent because the quick start also has the diagram. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, I think that diagram should be, well, it's my opinion, should be split in multiple diagrams. So, cause generally, yeah, so, um, so yeah, uh, work in progress anyway. Uh, I come up with something very soon and I'll share the the Google Docs as soon as possible. Okay, so maybe work with Andy if you're updating the diagram to incorporate them into the quick start guide. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, deployments and build automation. Luca? Yeah, sorry. Is that the screen is arriving to me later? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the phone is all good, but the screen arrives later. So, uh, well, first of all, I don't know why, uh, well, I know why. I, I, I missed one of the stories, um, and I just duplicate one of the stories, but I'm not able to delete the other. So just choose one. They have the same points, 1371, one, and the one that you showed me before in maintenance. But you can't delete one of them? Yeah. I don't care. They are really the same thing and they have the same story point. So probably I would say that. 
Sorry? Can't you close it as duplicate? Yeah. That's how you updated the Jira workflow. <laughs> you can test it by <laughs> closing this as oh, a duplicate. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to delete it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I got it. Sure. Sure. Okay. I can close it as duplicate. Yeah, that will work. Uh -huh. Okay. Anyway. Um, so then two main things. The the first one, uh now uh we finally merge these uh um this new Jenkins file that allow us to uh install automatically open networking Linux on the fabric switches every time we deploy a pod through Jenkins. Uh now the next thing is to send commands either to XOS or ONOS, I still don't know because I didn't go through it yet, um, to configure the fabric. That's the next step. Uh, third point is uh, that uh, parameters in Jenkins are starting to increase, increase, and increase, uh, and they start to be really too much uh, to be managed. Uh, and so I think in the same repository where the pod configuration files are, uh, I want to structure that a little bit more and put some YAML files uh, that have all these variables that now live in Jenkins. Uh, there will be version and these allow, will allow us to have a better structure of all the variables. Um, so I think it will be better. This is the other task. I'm not sure I will be able to finish it, honestly. Uh, it depends how the library behaves. Um, but yeah, I put it there tentatively. Okay. That's it. Is there a way to kind of break down the work into something more granular that you think can be done in this print? No, because either you use, uh, you, you move to, to this thing uh, or you don't. I mean, once I can parse the variables, it's just a matter of up uploading, you know, the configuration file somewhere and and it's, it's the same, it will be the same for all the pods. And if one variable can be read, can be read from the repository, uh, from the YAML file, it's, it will be okay for all the variables. And at that point, the task will become trivial. So it can be more granular than this. It's five story points, it's fine. I'm just saying, I just put it there, but I'm not sure how the library be, would be, right? Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Uh, I I think uh, I can make it, but let's see. And then uh, I skipped unit testing, um, unit test framework, but I want to go back and um, so where are we at identifying the unit test framework for all the relevant components? Uh, There's a document that was started. Yeah, there was a document that was uh, started. And I, I think the unit test framework have been identified at least for uh, XOS and, and the GUI. I'm not aware of other uh, pieces that we are planning to unit test since the, the rest of the code is mostly um, Ansible playbooks that cannot be unit tested by definition. And there are, of course, tests for uh, the honest application, and I think their uh, unit testing framework is already in place and used. Mm -hmm. I don't see any any reason to change that. So can you close with that? Uh, yeah. And then, um, Zach, are we still on track to set up sonar cube in this sprint? I, I do need some help um, getting, uh, that, I don't think that's gonna take too long, but um, I will need some help by for resources to get, um, a system to set it up on and, and whatnot. Um, is that yeah, something uh, Luca can? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can set up the machine for you on Amazon. I can't remember if we if we ever went through that already for card, because maybe we already have a sonar cube machine and we just don't use it, uh, but I can't remember in this moment. I just saw the story now and I realized, hey, help is needed. So I'll take care of it. Okay, and at also I, at least I'll give you the machine. I don't know how SonarCube works internally, uh, but I'll bring you to the point where you can access to SonarCube using your credentials, and then you'll do the magic inside. <laughs> if 
if, if you want, I can I can set up Sonar Cube if you just give me a bare machine, um, and then uh, I may need extra credentials into Garrett to get it to go. But um, yeah, mm. I, I just do the first part usually because uh, it's more for the integration with cloud rather than okay. anything else. But mm, I mean. Is the same. I, I just need to do this integration with cloud. You need to insert just very few few things in in the configuration, and and that's it. But but from there, it's all yours. Okay, sounds good. Hmm. All right. Okay, Zach, can you add a story? Sure, I'll do that. To set up Sonar Cube. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. We have a bunch of old epics. I've been trying to go through them and flag them for folks to review. Uh, but if folks can start go through the refactor XOS, refactor build and deploy, right? Go through the old stories and start getting rid of them. Um, either note them as won't fix or uh, right, we can throw them into one of the other epics. But otherwise, I think they're not going to get done. Okay, Fabric? Uh, can you refresh the page? Um, so, um, as discussed uh, in, in the uh, sprint demo last week, I split the uh, Geohomic um, stories into five smaller stories, uh, the first five of them. Um, and then I I think Sorop is uh, still working on uh, the ECMP group refactoring, but didn't, for some reason I can't find a story in Jira for he didn't create one. But anyway, that's, 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 that's done. Okay, that's done. Okay. Um, and um, Ian, Jonah, do you want to speak here? <coughs> yeah, um, let me. Um, working on adding a couple of extra features we need to the FPM protocol um, to be able to detect failures. Um, if one of the quasi routers goes down, we need to be able to detect that it fails so that we know to reroute um, to route from a different router. Um, and, and then, yeah, adding an, another feature to allow us to identify, um, basically to, to enable multiple connections from one quasi router to, to multiple different hardware systems um, to get better redundancy. And uh, currently, the, uh, the the host location provider won't update the IP address from DMCC X message if the host, uh, billion of hosts, and uh, it's different to billion of DMCC server. So I'm trying to fix things, this problem, and also provide the uh, command line. Uh, but I haven't talked to so really discussed this part. And uh, support the SCC P6, which uh, I'm working in. Uh, so this story point is A, right, uh, which is the whole sprint. Um, so uh, can we get this broken down? Yeah, maybe I think. Because well, the I don't think that as big as a, a, a probably put it by, but anyway. Uh, I'm sure I would discuss this then. Yeah, so either yeah, lower the story point or break them out into more okay. stories. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. And um, also, I think Simon. Uh, is going to work on some things related to the GUI, not specifically for the fabric, but it helps up help helps the fabric um, uh, deployment, um, debugging, and so on. And he will eventually do um, some troubleshooting tools uh, as well. Uh, maybe not in this print, but I'll ask Simon to include some things um, over here. Um, Backing those over in ONOS, since yeah, they're part of the ONOS kind of core functionality. Okay, um, so if he's tracking them in ONOS, that's fine. 
And since he won't be doing troubleshooting tools for the fabric this time, uh, I guess it doesn't need to be included in this print. I think the only question I have is from a version standpoint, are you guys synced up on uh, what's located where, right? So I think Simon's changes are going to be in 1.11. Um, and then for cord itself, we're going to use 1.10. I think Fabric still has stuff on master uh, that you guys are doing. So I assume uh, I'm Everything that you see over here is for 1.11. None of this is for 1.10. Okay, um, so this, is, so this is also 1.11. Yeah. Um, cord next release will be on 1.10 as as much as we can, we'll try 1.11, but I think the decision was taken for 1.10. Yeah, Everything that you see over here is not meant for Cord's next release. Okay, and then, uh, Sarah, your story 803 is eight-story Yeah, actually it includes uh, one of Charles' stories, so I'll work with him to change that. So Charles is a story that says ECMP calculation for multi-home hosts. That's it. Yeah, that's where we that. So that's actually part of routing. Um, so we'll, I'll work with him to fix um, these stories. Um, and um, one more thing is Sanjana has just joined. I haven't had a chance to talk to her yet. Um, but some of her tasks will also come on. Okay. Once she can. Yeah. I think we're done here. Okay, thanks, Sarah. QA? Okay, in terms of QA coverage, uh, we have only a few tabs this week, um, I mean, sorry, for this print, uh, as most of the QA folks will be on vacation for almost one week each of us. Uh, so these are the stories that we have. And 1310 is about the adding, like running functional tests of VSP, VTM, and fabric on pod. And um, this has been carried from the older, uh, the previous print. Uh, we had some issues running these tests on the pod. Uh, we made some changes to the framework, but uh, looks like we still need to make more changes. And we also have some issues bringing up the pod as well. Uh, so this task, hopefully, we plan to finish by end of this week. And the next story, 1399, is about uh, uh, building a framework around the gRPC API. So this was a request from Scott, uh, if we could use gRPC APIs uh, to build some tests using the framework. And uh, for this story, most probably we will be analyzing the existing framework if we could incorporate uh, bringing up the gRPC API test as well. Otherwise, we have to make some changes to the framework and uh, we will add the test accordingly. And 1398 uh, is about the dynamic input file generation for tests. Um, uh, right now we have we are using uh, static files, input files to run the test against. Uh, so using using that we are we had some issues while running some Jenkins commits. And what we thought was it's better to have um, a generation of dynamic inputs based on the profile that we load. So we have like a strategy how to go about it. So we would accomplish in this story. And 1397 is against, um, again, the REST, API, REST APIs, the Chameleon APIs. Um, we, uh, what we thought was, um, uh, this is uh, based on the discussion from Joe Scott uh, to have a, uh, uh, validate the each service profile, uh, uh, validate the images and services accordingly based on the profile that is loaded on the system. So uh, we would uh, see what the profile is loaded on the system and then generate uh, the images and the services on the con from the configuration files and then validate the uh, profile accordingly. So we would uh, cover it for both ECOD, MCOD, and RCOD, and uh, we would start adding more tests as we go forward. So, but this, is, this will be like a basic test to start with. So we would, this is like an enhancement to the existing Jenkins job that we have right now to, to test more, more efficiently. So these are the stories that we want to cover.
Okay, thank you, teacher. Oh, and sorry, and also we would be having the <coughs> touches as well. Uh, it's not here yet, but uh, Yan, you had uh, given a comment to Tiru that she needs to pick up the stories. <laughs> yes, it's 40 points. I know, it's just 40 points. So we have it in the backlog down there, but this is not complete yet, so there will be another story added by him. Okay. Thanks. Yes, the uh, non complete numbers were quite high. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Record? Yeah, so we um, got a couple of stories that are still a little bit. You can do a little bit of the job. So, uh, they basically all have to do with um, our attempts at mo data modeling for the various pieces in eCorp deployment. So the transport, uh, the tenant, and for maybe two pieces. Uh, and along with that comes, um, so next to the data model, the actual uh, synchronization steps. Uh, that <sighs> Okay, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> 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 yeah, this, is, this is fascinating. I that, but, uh, but that's more or less what's it. I think that's too bad. Eh? <laughs> no, 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 forget it. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Luca is getting ready but to go up. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's waking up, right? <laughs> The good, the good news. Well, the bad news is that it was impossible to hear you, so that's the excuse at least. Okay. You were far away, I guess, from the mic. Yeah, I know. So I'm not was... Yeah. I think um, the eCore changes to sync up with 3.0. Is that coming in 3.0.1? Yeah, that I don't know. I, I haven't tried that before. So I don't know what the status is Okay. Um, I'll I'll let you know, or I, I don't know. I can make a ticket for it so we can chat it publicly if you prefer that. Yeah, because Andy's going to be yeah. doing a three dot yeah, one, exactly. so let's that. figure out who yeah. who he needs to wait on. Yeah. Besides okay. the fixes. And then I think the same question for A chord. A chord. But Andy, while you're here next week, you're going to be working with the E chord, M chord, and A chord folks, right? So if you can uh, work with Bora to see if A chord is coming in through that or that one. Yes, I will. I will sync up with everybody when I'm there. Okay. Um, Those could be your dependencies for the three dot or that one build. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Mcourt, can you refresh? Um, for this trend, we will move the, all the services from 2.0 to 3.0, uh, the EPC services and the BU service. And uh, uh, the third task is uh, uh, we want to run the M code directly on calling a box and the port and skip the R code. Because in 2.0, we need to set up the code First, which by default set up the R code. So we clean up and then set up M code environment. So, so this time we don't want to use just the use the R code part directly with M code. So this is for the coding box. And uh, then uh, right now there's a failure in the uh, code three dot zero for a service profile. We will fix that. And the last one is um, the uh, there's a, a thread in M code team. We plan to release all the uh, EPCs, the open source EPC, uh, especially the one from Intel, they already have some performance uh, numbers. So when they release um, from our lab site in about maybe September, I guess, they don't want, uh, they want to keep uh, testing, daily testing on the Jenkins to keep, make sure the performance is good day by day uh, during the release. So I will discuss with you to set up the Jenkins. That's all. So, Ping Ping, mm -hmm. this one says shared dilution. I thought the September release for M chord was based upon dangerous edition. Yes. 
And then my, that, that one is, uh, we use it every day, for my, both for master and uh, after three, 2000, you use know, that the one you, you click, the 14, 12, this one, can be used uh, on 3000 and master. Okay, so you'll do that. Um, Zach, uh, Scott, Zach, is there, is there, um, I thought there was still work pending for open class. There is, um, I intend to get that done in the next day or so. Um, I have, I have the note at installing currently on the physical prod to hand over to Scott. Um, and if that goes well, I'll probably have it to him in the next day or so. Okay, so is, is there still a pending story? Well, I, I don't want to say it's it's totally done until it's done, so. Okay, uh, I'm just noting that there is no other story than Scott in the Open Cloud Epic. I don't think I added one initially. Um, let me, uh, or it might be in a previous, it might have been assigned to a previous sprint. Um, I can move that up if you want me to. Okay, that would be good. Okay, will do. Okay, Scott? Uh, yeah, so my story is to uh, install the new CDN software. Um, assuming that gets done in a week, I think that's a reasonable goal for that. And uh, we've installed CDN software before, so I'm not expecting anything uh, significant blockers to come up in that. Okay. And then, David? Yeah, just added one nice and simple one while you were talking. We need to get together with the MCORP people. Uh, I know I have a thread and email that I got to catch up on that and document the plan for containers that the brigade is actually going to implement. Put that down as five story points right now. Um, just there's going to be some meetings behind that as well. Don't know how you really want to break this up into JIRAs on this because it's some level of documentation, some level of meetings in terms of activities. Okay, but the Containers Brigade has officially launched? Uh, as far as I know it has. It hasn't had much activity other than a couple of emails to people back and forth that's officially launched. Okay, so my assumption is we'll be tracking the Container Brigade work here and then they can pick off stories or add stories as you guys get for them. Yes, yes. Okay, sounds good. Um, I think that was it. Uh, did I leave anything or anyone out? Okay. Yeah, from this friend, uh, Omar also joined in MCOS. Uh -huh. uh, so that uh, Ryan Green, he, he used to be in here all along. So they, uh, he said to help us, so we have a small group of people that he was on. Okay. So I expect more stories and more work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank <laughs> you.